Dear friends of the Techn Technopod uh, Summit, uh, for Hydro and uh, for all of us, we are very aware of the fact that uh, uh, the world and the global economy have to move from grey to green and we have to challenge the waste of energy. In Hydro we see that this as a responsibility, but as a leading global aluminium company we also see this as an opportunity and we want to take part of this development. We have a long experience in close cooperation with the universities, research institutions. This is a key for becoming one of the companies that will be a part of the solutions. And we see that science, research, development, technology, innovation will be a very important part to, to be able to develop solutions for the future. We have seen hundreds of millions moving from poverty to the middle class with increasing consumption of energy and also with increasing emissions of climate gases. This development will continue, but we have to make it in a sustainable way. We have to attack the challenges. Uh, the businesses and the industries that seen, see this as an obstacle and not as an opportunity will be the losers. We will want to participate and make this a sustainable development and we see a lot of opportunities here. And I want to share with you my thoughts about the exciting journey that we see aluminium will take part of in this development. Yes, aluminium requires a lot of energy. The production of aluminium is energy intensive and CO2 is an inherent part of the primary production of aluminium. But if you want to judge the impact of aluminium on the climate, we have to take a life cycle analysis. And when we do that, we see that aluminium has the possibility to be energy positive and also climate positive. We are participating in development of lighter cars to reduce emission in automotive and transport. We are taking part in developing energy efficient and energy positive buildings. And you know buildings contributes to 40% of the global CO2 emissions and 40% of the energy consumption in the world. And we are also actively taking part in developing packaging solutions which uh, increase the shelf life of food, reduce waste and also reduce uh, CO2 emission on transport. And of course also we are taking part of recycling of aluminium which is very important because uh, when we take uh, the metal back to the value chain we take care of 95% of the original energy content in the metal. Um, and if you take a global perspective of all aluminium that have ever been produced, 75% of aluminium is still in use due to re recycling. We are contributing in several different uh, areas. In addition to reducing the energy uh, uh, consumption in our own production, we are cl working closely with customers in automotive to deliver more and more energy efficient solutions to the automotive. Uh, and that's why automotive and transport is also one of the key drivers for growth in aluminium consumption because the customers want to drive with cars that have more higher fuel efficiency and less CO2 emissions. Energy efficient buildings, uh, we have delivered uh, buildings that are energy neutral as mentioned. We have delivered office buildings for uh, 3,000 uh, people that uh, have 50% less energy consumption than a normal uh, office building. We are contributing with uh, aluminium to solar parks in uh, thermal solar energy solutions and photovoltaic energy solutions. I mentioned packaging as a very important part where customers are asking for packaging solutions based on recycled metal. And recycling itself uh, has today uh, about 25% of the end user market in aluminium, meaning that uh, when you buy a, a bicycle or a, a window of aluminium today, uh, there could be a 25% chance that uh, there is uh, recycled, uh, that at least 25% of the metal is based on recycled uh, aluminium. 
You may say that I, I love aluminium, and uh, I'm not alone. There are, there are several uh, uh, lovers of aluminium, and uh, we have a good example with one of the big OEMs producing uh, high volume cars where they use more and more aluminium. The benefit it is obvious. And we are cl working very closely together with these, uh, these companies. It's a good example of uh, close cooperation where also basic research and alloy development leads to new products, to new applications that can reduce the impact on the climate change. There are several reasons why we are quite optimistic with regard to our position, especially here in Norway. We have uh, uh, one, one of the strongholds in aluminium production in Norway, but we are operating in 40 countries in the world. If you look at the global CO2 emission from aluminium production, and uh, uh, make a benchmark of the different countries, where is the best place with regard to the climate to produce aluminium? Norway is the best together with Iceland, because we are basing our energy on hydropower, CO2-free, renewable energy. And when we produce aluminium in Norway and export aluminium, we are exporting renewable energy in solid state that can be recycled. And this is a sustainable solution. We are working hard to develop the next generation technology for aluminium production because CO2 emission, as I mentioned, is an inherent part of the primary production, but uh, it is also important for us, and that will have an even bigger impact on the climate change to reduce energy consumption for primary production. We are now in the forefront of the global technology in the primary aluminium production, thanks to close cooperation with uh, NTNU, with Sintef, with the Institute for Energy Technology in Norway and University in Oslo. And we, we have a target to uh, be even better. Uh, 10 kilowatt hour per kilo aluminium is a theoretical target, but we, we have that ambition going forward. Today we are 12.5, the global average is about 14 to 14.5. Uh, kilowatt hour per kilo aluminium. We have a good track record with regard to reduction of climate gases and uh, or uh, uh, CO2 equivalents. We have reduced during the last uh, 20 years the CO2 equivalents with uh, 70% in aluminium production. And we also have a good track record with regard to reduction of energy consumption in aluminium production. This will continue and we have very strong efforts in our research centers that are located wall to wall with full scale uh, aluminium production. And this is one of the secrets for our company that uh, we have close contacts with research institutions and universities, but our research centers are placed close to full scale production. That means it's a very short distance between theory and industrial application. And in some cases, professors that are visiting our sites that see that, uh, okay, this technology works in practice, does it also work in theory? <laughs> and that is why we also very encourage with the, with the close cooperation we have with uh, the top scientists in the world. Uh, I think some of them are absolutely inherent on them. Uh, basic science, uh, scientists and scientists are very important for us because when we are producing aluminium, we are converging these different technologies into a technical solution, industrial solution. So we are uh, using uh, the best uh, knowledge, uh, the best scientists in different areas to be able to produce aluminium with the lowest energy consumption in the world. And that is also an ongoing process. We are not finished. We have to continue to strive for even more energy efficient aluminium production going forward. Metallurgy is very important for us. The structure of aluminium uh, is a face center cubic structure that allows for forming in complex shapes, for rolling, for extrusion, where we are very active in the global market. We are one of the biggest in, uh, in uh, rolling in Europe and uh, also in uh, extrusion. Uh, we are working uh, uh, with uh, global customers to develop the next generation uh, applications. 
and uh, some customers are challenging us with special applications, for example, that uh, the aluminium products uh, should uh, stand in the, the challenging environments with regard to temperature variations, which is a challenge for a lot of metals, but where we have uh, been able to manipulate the, the structure on atomic level and uh, deliver the products that is needed for the special applications. And this is also an ongoing uh, uh, process where we work also very close together with, uh, with the research institutions and, uh, and uh, universities. We have spent about 25 years to uh, take over, more or less, uh, completely heat exchanger technology in cars. This was mainly uh, driven by copper metal previously. No aluminium is used for radiators, air condition, uh, brake cooling systems in cars and so on. Uh, and this is a, it's a major drive for the growth. We are now also developing applications for the non-automotive heat exchanger market, which means that we are now uh, moving into heat pumps, uh, heat exchange system for buildings, uh, in order to uh, support energy efficient uh, building solutions. Uh, of course, we are supplying uh, uh, solutions for PCs, uh, iPad without aluminium, would require an internal fan to cool down the electronics, while aluminium take care of that due to the heat conductivity of the metal. Uh, we are actively uh, developing uh, more and more efficient building solutions uh, in uh, Europe, uh, in uh, other parts of the world. And uh, we are in uh, packaging, uh, for example, in Cannes, which is one of the big uh, markets. It took uh, 20 years to develop a can like this. It's quite uh, high technology. It looks very simple. And uh, when you open a can like this, you can hear the sound of a high magnesium alloy which is a special alloy developed uh, by Hydro and some other competitors, which uh, means that uh, it is possible to open, open the can in an efficient way. I mentioned aluminium for cars that is used to uh, make the cars lighter and more fuel efficient, but it's also important for us to develop solutions for cars that make them safer. So uh, crash management is an important part of development and, and uh, also the construction of cars. And we are actively uh, cooperating uh, also here in Trondheim with the, in the Simlab where we are developing a new application that makes car much safer if you are un unlucky and have a crash. So you are, have a better chance to, to survive. And not at least, here in Trondheim, uh, together with uh, uh, our uh, partner in the Powerhouse Alliance, uh, we are planning to build an energy-positive building. If it is possible to build an energy-positive building in Trondheim, in this uh, environment, with regard to the challenging climate here in Trondheim, uh, then we can do it everywhere. Uh, we are also in Oslo uh, now cooperating in the Powerhouse uh, Alliance to develop uh, concept and a solution in connection with the refurbishment of a full-scale office building, where we see that this office building can also be turned into an energy-positive building. That will also be a, a groundbreaking uh, a solution. It will be the first refurbishment in the world that in a building that will turn the building into an energy-positive solution. We are quite optimistic with regard to that, and uh, we know that uh, there are a lot of buildings in the world uh, that uh, are using quite a lot of energy, so the market is there. So these are some examples of uh, the applications of aluminium, and uh, we are quite optimistic about what we can contribute with in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.